What's up, Coastal? How are you guys doing this morning? <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is TJ. I'm one of the pastors here. We're glad that you're with us this morning for our, uh, the, the fourth week of our series, Love, Sex, and Rock and Roll. You guys enjoying this series so far? This has been a good one. Glad you guys are enjoying it. Man, we're pumped to be sharing and teaching on relationships and, and what God wants to do in your lives. Let, let, before we kind of begin, you know, next weekend, Shayla and I, we're going we're gonna to share the stage. And uh, we're going to answer the questions that you guys have. And throughout the last four weeks, you guys have been texting in questions. So you can continue to text in questions. We want to teach you some principles, some different things that we've learned. And answer your questions as well uh, next weekend. But this weekend, everybody say this weekend. This weekend is going to be a little bit different um, because we're going to be talking about some things that completely go against culture and what culture says, uh, specifically when it comes to ladies. Uh, ladies, where are the ladies at? Come on, ladies. Are you guys? Okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk to you today. And, and for some of you, if this... Maybe you're, you're new to church or you've been in church for a long time. You're going to hear some things in church that uh, you probably have never heard, and that's okay. Um, partly because uh, I, I want to debunk some things because I think the church has kind of lost some ideals because culture is saying one thing, and, and God's Word says a completely different thing. And one of the reasons why we, we've got to go back to God's Word and what God's Word says is because uh, the world's way for marriage and relationships is failing. It just is straight up 50% of marriages end in divorce. And I know that there's pastors that will get up and will say, well, you know what? It's the same in the church. No, it's not. That's actually a false statistic. For couples that go to church regularly, like meeting three out of four weeks and pray together, the divorce statistics are in single digits. So what that tells me is that God's way is way better than what the world has been feeding us for a long time. And so we're going to get to the truth of what God says. And I believe that, you know, we beat dudes up last week when talking about men. Ladies, it's your turn now. Welcome to church. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to do the beating, though. Uh, so anyways, um, a few years back, I, w I went to Disney uh, to one of the water parks with my niece and my nephew. And, and we, when we go to water parks, I'm one of those guys that when we go to the beach or whatever, I, I, I keep my shirt on. I'm a shirt keeper honor guy uh, because <laughs> I don't know if that's, that's a correct terminology. But, uh, you know, you, you, for, for girls, it's okay to have an hourglass shape. For guys, it's, it's not very appealing when you have an hourglass shape. And so I figured out that black T-shirts keep you slimming. And, uh, and so if you notice, virtually every week I wear a black T-shirt. <laughs> just, just a little, some wisdom there. And, uh, and so, so we're at this, this, this water park. And, and, and ladies, have you ever noticed that it, like, you can feel really, really good about yourself if you just focus on somebody else? And so, so, so I've learned this when it comes to me at, at water parks. So what I do is, is I'm, I remember I'm standing in line and I'm, I'm not, I'm feeling a little insecure because that's, that's a little typical, you know, I'm at a water park and all these things are going on. And, and, and so I'm there with my niece and my nephew, they're in like junior high, we're hanging out and having some fun and, and I'm feeling a little insecure. But then I, I see a guy that is way further out of shape than I am. And all of a sudden I start to feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know what I'm saying? I'm like... <laughs> doing pretty good in life. You know, I got it going on. I, I'm all, I was almost ready to rip my shirt off, and then I remember what it looked like underneath there, and that's like, I'm just going to keep that on. And so, but, but it's easy to feel good about yourself when you compare yourself to other people, isn't it? And there's some married people that they feel really, really good about themselves because you're focusing on the imperfections of your spouse to elevate yourself. And I, I know for a, a lot of ladies, what happens is, is you, you start focusing on the imperfections of your husband, and you start to feel really, really good about yourself. And here's what I know is that, that your husband, like, he's awkward. He's weird. Ladies, I know that men are weird. They just are. Why? Like, how can a guy watch Sports Center over and over and over again? It's the same show every 30 minutes, but a guy will watch that for two hours. Why? Because we're weird. Why will a guy uh, pour deer pee on him and then go stand in the woods for hours? Because we're weird. A man will fart in public and laugh about it because we're weird. Like, the only people that I know that will go and take a big dump in the bathroom and then walk out and go like, hey, guys, you got to come check this out and smell this. And other guys will go, okay, and whoa, and 
Oh, man, that's crazy because we're weird. I've yet to see a lady walk out of the women's restroom here and go, hey, I just blew it up, ladies. Come see. <laughs> right? Because, man, man, we're weird. And if you want to change the focus of your relationship from fighting in it, you have to realize that you, you've got to focus a little bit on yourself. Like in 20 years of being a pastor, I've yet to have a marriage counseling session where, where somebody walks in and goes, you know what, it's all my fault. No, what they always say is, is if they would do this, if they would do that, if they would change this and that and that and that, then our marriage would be good. And so we, we can't focus on Jesus changed them. What we need to do, ladies, is we need to say, Jesus, how do you want to refine me? How do you want to change me? How do you want to transform me? What do you want to do in my life? And the more that we continue to focus on the imperfections of our husbands, what happens, ladies, is, is you start to realize that your husband is a little unholy, and you start to think that you're extremely holy, when the reality is, is you're comparing yourself against your husband instead of God's word. And our comparison doesn't need to be like, how do I look in the reflection of my spouse because we know they're jacked up and weird. What we need to do is we need to look at it and how does our reflection compare to that of Jesus. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about three words today, ladies, and uh, this is specifically for you. And we're going to start off really, really easy. Uh, we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 3. The first word is this, number one, if you're taking notes, Submission. Nobody, nobody, huh? Nobody's like, yeah, that's the best word ever. No. Like, there's, there's some words that, that, like, they just, they should have never been invented, right? Like, I would say the word moist should never be used. Is anybody with me? Is that, like, the, not the worst word out there? That just, that's more, like, what do we need to describe anything that's moist? I mean, it's just, like, there's just no description that needs that word. So, so one person agrees with me. Okay, we're going we're gonna to talk here today, okay? Well, you know, the, you're going to get saved. The rest of these ladies are going straight to hell. Oh, no, I'm just going <laughs> to. She was like, perfect. She was going to sell you all out straight up. <laughs> but there's, there's like, there's certain TV shows that, like, oh, certain songs, like, and the word submission is, is, is one of those words. And here's what I know. It's been misused and abused in church for so long. But here's what I know, ladies. When you understand a true biblical context of submission, submission, instead of being one of those words that feels like, oh, man, that just rubs me the wrong way, it can actually be one of the most freeing words that you ever experience within the correct context. And, and Peter here, what he does is he addresses the ladies first when he starts talking about the relational element. And the reason he addresses the ladies first is because he knows that that. That lady will never be submitted to a man until she's submitted to Christ. And so this is what he says in 1 Peter chapter 3, starting at verse 1. He says this, Wives, in the same way be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words, by the behavior of their lives. Notice, they're not going to be won by your nagging. They're not going to be won by your rolling of your eyes. They may be won over by your behavior in life. And, and so Peter right here, what he's saying is he's saying, listen, the first area of submission that has to take place is your submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If we can't submit in that relationship, and basically what that means is we have to realize that we are here and God is over there. And there is a gap between here and there that we cannot cross on our own. And because Jesus was willing to go and lay down his life on the cross, he bridges the gap. And what he asks from us is that we would submit our life to him, that we'd go, God, I fully surrender to you. And so... We've got to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ because you will never submit to a man until you're submitted to the man. So we've got to submit to God. Men, as our job, our job is to make it as easy as possible for our wives to submit first to Christ and then to us. See, a lot of guys think that that, that God has just given us authority. No, no, no. God has not just given us authority. He's given us also responsibility. 
So, so it is not your wife's job to bring you nachos and chicken wings all the time. That is not her role in life. Submit to me, woman. Bring me food. Like a guy that takes that attitude has no context of what this is saying. Like he is manipulating God's word. No, 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 what it's saying is it's saying, listen, you want to have authority. Authority comes with responsibility. And so the more responsibility that you take in your home to help create an atmosphere where your wife can submit to the lordship of Jesus Christ and to you, all of a sudden it changes everything. Because at the end of the day, husbands, you're going to be responsible for your wife's relationship. There's a responsibility there. You're going to give an account of that because you've been given that authority. And with that authority comes responsibility. So, ladies, what that means is you don't badger him right now. But when he gets before God, you can be like, God, get him. Sick him. I told him not to make that decision. Lightning bolt him. I'll get back. <laughs> Listen, guys. Our authority only goes as far as we take a responsibility to help our wives follow God. By what we talked about last week. We laying down our lives like Christ laid down his life for the church. It's us dying to ourself so we can serve her. And so here, here's, here's where, like, this has been twisted. For a lot of ladies, they think, well, submission just means you think that I'm stupid. Let's be honest. Most ladies in the relationship are way more intelligent than the guy is. I'm for real. Like, Guys, a lot of us would be way better off if we'd listen more to our wives than to our desires. <laughs> that was a guy clapping, so it's okay. I think he's single, though. So, like, ladies, take note. I'll just. <laughs> like, our wife, I, in fact, your wife is probably way more emotionally intelligent than you. Most wives are way more perceptive than guys are. They're, they're much better discernment of character and people. And one of the greatest things that we can do as a husband is, is, is listen to them because they're not dumb. In fact, they could really enhance our relationships in some major, major ways. But Pastor TJ, I've heard that if submission just means I'm weak, again, not true. You've got to look at the context of what's happening because right before this in 1 Peter chapter 2, it's talking about Jesus and him going to the cross. It actually says that Jesus in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23, that Jesus left his case in the hands of God, who was always there to judge. See, Jesus accomplished a lot as the roaring lion of Judah. But he went to the cross as a submitted lamb of God. And so there, there's a time, ladies, for you to be the roaring line of Judah. But there's also a time for you to be the submitted lamb of God. And that is not a weak thing. That's actually saying, like, hey, I have a greater level of trust because ultimately I'm trusting you who is trusting Christ. And, man, what that means is that we've got to be displaying that we're leading and following God. Because that woman is not weak. And when you submit, it does not mean you're weak. It also does not mean that you stay in a physically abusive relationship, ladies. Some of you need to hear this because some of you are in a relationship where your husband abuses you and you need to get out. He is really, really a weak man. I'm not saying divorce him, but like you need to get out of that situation. I promise you, if you're in that situation, you will not be homeless or hungry. And I know some dude right now is squeezing his wife's knee, being like, you better not, whatever. Sir, sir, wherever you are, stop it. Like, there is no need for that. And if you want to continue to do that, you can meet me outside after church, and we'll see how tough you are. And when you whip my butt, there's some guys that aren't very safe here that are MMAs, and I promise you that they can whip your butt. Dude, you need to deal with your anger problem. We want to help you with that. We, you need to deal with your drinking problem. We, we want to help you with that. We don't want to see that cycle continue from you to your kids. And they're going to learn that from somewhere, and they're learning that from you. So... 
Let's stop it. Well, but, but if a woman starts to fight a man, she puts herself in the man's place. No, she doesn't, you freaking redneck. <laughs> Get some help. Single girls, it does not say submit to your boyfriends. That dude is telling you what to do, what to wear, how to drive, who to be friends with. That is a controlling man. Drop that joker like it's hot. Don't, don't date a dude that doesn't love Jesus. But it says that we can win him over if by our love. No, no, the way you win him over is by going, you're not in love with Jesus. I won't even talk to you. Because you're not worthy of my time or my affection that God gets right now. When you fall more in love with Jesus than I am, then come and talk to me. Then I'll really want to meet you. Little old school Tevin Campbell. Listen, the reason I will always listen to my wife is because she honors and respects me. And the fact, she's, she's way smarter than I am. I'm the beauty, she's the brains in the operation. I mean, it's just, <laughs> she's not here, so I can say whatever. <laughs> but ladies, let me tell you something. If, if you'll honor and respect your husband, I promise you, your husband will not only listen to you, he will love you better than you've ever imagined. It starts by you submitting to Christ and to him. Number two, purity. Purity. See, it, it, it's easy if I'm talking to guys about this, like stop looking at porn. Guys, stop looking at porn. Don't sleep with somebody that's not your wife. Pastor, why? why what, what's going on? Oh, you got a porn problem? Let's pray for you. Like, it's It's easy. Um, for, for, for girls, it's a little bit different. And, and like, man, purity is, is a tough thing. I, and it's a struggle for me because I don't know. I've only been flirted with like three times in my lifetime since I got married. And only once of them was by a woman. So I don't know what that says about me <laughs> and the vibe I'm putting off as a man. Like, I don't want a guy flirting with me. I don't want a girl flirting with me. I don't want a dog sniffing me. Like, I'm a married man. I, like, I want to stay pure. But one of the things that, uh, in doing research, is, is that women struggle a lot with purity. And uh, it's, it's becoming more and more evident today. And so in, in verse 2, he says, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. So purity is, is not only an internal thing, it's a visible thing. He says, man, we, we've got to be pure in life. And so simple question for you today are you pure in your motives towards your husband? Well, what do you mean by that, TJ? Well, some of you are a manipulator. And so when you don't get your way, what you do is you turn on the waterworks and you cry and you throw a fit, not because you're heartbroken, but because you're selfish and it's evil and it's wrong and you need to stop it. Some of you, you yell at him. Hey, babe, what's wrong? Nothing! <laughs> um, I, 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 I kind of feels like something might be going on. I'm fine! No, you're not. You're a liar. Stop it. Some of you, you give your husband the silent treatment. Well, I'm just not going to talk to him. That was cool in kindergarten. <laughs> it's time for some of us to grow up when it comes to purity and of our motives. Let's talk about social media. I know that, uh, you know, you bring up social media. Some of you are updating your social media right now. But as a pastor in the last, in the last 10 years, like first 10 years of ministry, if there, was, if there was an affair that was happening, it was because a guy was cheating on his wife. But over the last 10 years, man, there has been a game changer that's been happening. I've been seeing more and more women get into affairs and fall into affairs. And, and statistically, you start looking up stuff, and it, start, it, it all starts with an emotional connection, typically over social media. What happens is, is, is you're not happy with your relationship. You're not emotionally connecting with your husband at, at some point. And so you see somebody from the past on Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat, and, and, you, and there used to be a connection there. And here's the problem with 
social media is you're seeing the highlights of their life, not the reality of their life. And so you think, man, what would life be like with them? I mean, they were just in Aruba. I like, I would like to be in Aruba. I'm stuck in Pompano. I don't want to be in Pompano. And, and so you start daydreaming, and all of a sudden you send a little message. Hey, it was it's good to connect on social media, and a little message turns into something more. And before long, you're like, oh, you're only four hours away. We should meet up for lunch. And while something physical might not have happened yet, maybe it has, all of a sudden you're having an emotional affair with that person. Listen, cut that thing off. I know how it ends and it's not good. Yeah. Matthew tells us if our life isn't built on the rock, man, it's all going to crumble. And I'm not saying you need to get rid of your social media account, but what you do need to do is get before God and repent and say, God, I want to have a pure heart and purity in my relationship, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to stay pure. Some of you, you have unrealistic expectations. You watch The Bachelor. Oh, Colton, he's so romantic. You know what I call that? That is female porn at its best right there. I'm like... He's, he's so perfect. Listen, he doesn't have a job. He's got an entourage of people setting up every single day, telling him what to do while ABC is footing the bill. And after every single one of those TV shows ends, what happens to the relationship? It tanks. Why? Give that job, that dude a job and some debt and see how it goes. Oprah. Some of y'all are getting your relational advice from her. How many husbands has she had? I know I'm, I'm going to after the high priestess, but come on, seriously. Bagel, zero. No clue. Got a boy toy Stedman. That's, all, that's not what you want. Ladies, you get your ideas of romance from the world, you're going to end up with the same result as the world. What you need to do is go with your spouse and go open up Song of Solomon and get some romance ideas in there. <laughs> if you've never done that before, you'll be climbing a palm tree here pretty soon. <laughs> Stay pure in that relationship. Single people, do not read Song of Solomon. That is not a book for you. When you get married, you can open that book for here. You can read the book of Revelation. That's what you get to read. <laughs> Purity. Number three. Beauty, beauty, I'm going to guarantee you a fact right now. Most women in this room do not feel beautiful. Most of the women in here do not. Men, do you realize that most women do not feel beautiful? Man, I tell my wife all the time, I'm like, I think my wife is the sexiest, hottest, most beautiful woman on the face of the planet. I'll be like, babe. You are so gorgeous. You know what she tells me? Whatever. <laughs> Straight up, that's her response. I'm, it's never like, TJ, you're a hunk. You know, it's like I never get, <laughs> never reciprocated back, nothing. <laughs> Women, can I tell you why you don't feel beautiful? False standards this world has created has made you insecure. So what happens is, is you walk into the grocery store and you see 25 beautiful homes and you see this, you see this picture and you're like, my house doesn't look like that. That's because nobody's ever lived in this house. <laughs> like there are no little kids' fingerprints on that glass coffee table because if you have kids, you don't have a glass coffee table because right. <laughs> that thing ain't never been clean. And you're like, well, I'm not meeting the expectation because this is a false standard. Yeah. Or you see the 25 best southern desserts and you see that cake and you're like, oh, if I could just make a cake that looked like that. Listen, ladies, I'm going to give you a secret. Guys don't care what the cake looks like. <laughs> Guys, what do you care about? How it tastes, right? It can look like a pile of poop. If it tastes good, we in. Like, who puts flowers on a cake anyways? That's, that's, that's killing shrubbery for a cake. I mean, it's unrealistic expectations. 
Elle magazine. Michelle Williams, she's the same age as I am. She does not have a wrinkle on her face. False advertisement. They pick the most beautiful people on the planet to sell you things. You want to know why? Because ugly people don't sell stuff. I was watching TV last night, and, and this beautiful woman goes on, comes on TV, and she is pitching hemorrhoid cream. I'm like, you're beautiful when you have hemorrhoids? <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> But here's the deal, like, this is airbrushed, this is touched up. Seriously, no wrinkles at 40, I don't believe it. That's why when you see the TMZ shots, you're like, dang, she had a rough night. No, no, that's her reality. <laughs> False standards create this insecurity. And so, so he says in verse 3, he says, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. I know some of you are like, oh, my gosh, he's going to tell me I've got to put on a denim jumper and braid my hair and, like, I've got to homeschool my kids. It's going crazy. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I, I, I love fashion. Um, but do you realize that the clothes that are being marketed to our kids today are the same clothes that prostitutes wore in the 60s? In fact, I, 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 it blows my mind seeing teenage girls walking around with stuff hanging out, and I'm going, what's going on? But then I see mom pick them up, and I go, oh, I understand. See, mom doesn't feel beautiful, right. so therefore the daughter doesn't feel beautiful, and the cycle just continues on and on and on. He says, instead, it should be that of your inner self. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. He's saying, listen, the beauty that, that we perceive is outward doesn't really come from outward. It's all internal. And if our inside's messed up, it doesn't matter what we do the outside. It's never going to fill the void that's in our life. Because a lot of us are basing our beauty on what we do rather than whose we are. And beauty is held in the eyes of the beholder. And so who's holding your life? What's at the center of, of who you are today? For some of you here today, you have an eating disorder. And it is not God's will for you to have an eating disorder. You eat and you throw up. Why? Because you don't feel beautiful. For some of you, you're hopping from a moral relationship to a moral relationship, hoping that the next guy, if you do whatever he's asking you to do when it comes to sex, that finally you're going to feel beautiful. When the reality is, is you end up feeling more and more used and abused. For some of you, you struggle to feel beautiful because what has happened to you, 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 you were abandoned or you were let go or... Or you got dumped and you feel like damaged goods or you got a divorce, which has been like the big no-no in the church for a long, long time. And you feel like, man, I could, I'll never be beautiful again. For others of you, you were raped and you were abused and you carry the guilt and the shame of that and you question it. Say, how did, how did I put myself in that situation that without asking for that, what did, I, what did I do in that moment? And you don't feel like you're beautiful any longer. Some of you were molested as a young girl and, and you've never told anyone. In fact, do you know that one in three girls will be molested before the age of 18? And you've got all this, this guilt and this shame in your life and you're like, there's no way that I could ever be beautiful. And I want to give you some hope and encouragement here today. Because it's really easy to stay victimized because of what has happened to you. But I believe that God wants to give you some victory today when it comes to who you are. And this is what it says in Psalms 45, verse 10. It says, listen, O daughter. It says, listen, whatever your name is. And it says, put your name in there. He says, listen to me. 
Consider and give ear. Forget your people and your father's house. Forget everything that's happened in the past. Forget all of those things. And this is what he says, and this is what I want you to hear today. He says, the king is enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your Lord. It says, the king is enthralled. He's captivated. He's enchanted. He's overwhelmed by your beauty. The, the psalmist says you are actually fearfully and wonderfully made. What it means is that when God created you, when he shaped you and formed you and knit you in your mother's womb, when he finished building and creating you, he goes, man, this is the most beautiful product I've ever made. I'm throwing away the mold. He goes, you are unique. You are custom." You are a priceless work of art. He goes, man, I'm enthralled by your beauty. And for some of us here today, we need to come to the realization that God is enthralled by our beauty. He wants us to move from being a victim of what has happened to us in life to a victor because of what Christ has done in our life. That's why in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, therefore, if anyone, that includes you, anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, that is joined to him by faith as her savior, she is a new creation. Reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. It means that God comes in and picks up the broken pieces and takes the brokenness and creates this beautiful mosaic out of it. It says the old thing, the previous moral and spiritual conditions, doesn't matter what your past is, have passed away. Behold, new things have come because a spiritual awakening is bringing them. But TJ, I still feel the pain of my past. You might, but you don't have to be a prisoner to it any longer. He's doing something new. He's doing something fresh. And he's saying, hey, stop looking at all these false standards. Those are garbage. Start looking at my standard. My standard, I'm enthralled. I'm overwhelmed. I'm captivated. Captivated by your beauty. madly in love with you. And for some of us today, it's time for us to surrender. It's time for us to surrender our lives to God so that we can realize that the King is enthralled with our, by our beauty. For others of you, you've surrendered your life, but you keep going back to the empty tomb but God's not there because he's doing a new thing it's time for us to walk past our past into the better future that God has for us and I know some guy is saying TJ what does this have to do with marriage everything everything because if she doesn't believe that her creator loves her and thinks she's beautiful, she's never going to believe that you do. And if the creator isn't enthralled, how could you be? With every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you're in here today and there's some purity things that, that you, need to, you need to deal with here. Maybe you're, you're in a relationship and Maybe it's an emotional relationship. Maybe it's a physical relationship. I don't know what it is, but today is the day that you need to cut that thing off. You need to get before God and you need to say, God, I, need, I repent. Man, I lay this down at your feet. I don't, I don't want to live in, in a way that's outside of you. Trying to find my beauty and my worth in somebody else's eyes. I need to find that in your eyes. Maybe for others of you, today is the day that you need to surrender and realize that they, the king is enthralled by your beauty. It says, submit to him, for he is your Lord. Maybe today is the day that you need to surrender. I don't know what it is for you, but I know that God wants to set some ladies free. 
and who the sun sets free.